Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 21. Round 5 of our Moto E career mode is upon us and it's time for the Red Bull Ring of Austria here in Spielberg. So here we go then, practice time and I tell you what, I really do enjoy the Red Bull Ring of Austria so I'm feeling pretty confident that we can pretty much get the title sewn up here today and get it all done and dusted because I very much doubt that AI is going to beat us this time. I am considering maybe running on power setting 2 for the entire duration of the Grand Prix, but then again I think it's going to be very, very difficult in a track like this. It requires so much acceleration and top end speed, so we might have a torrid time if we do that. Maybe I'll save that for later on, potentially for Mazzano, because that could be very, very interesting. But as far as Moto E has gone so far, I've had a wonderful time in this championship mode. Unfortunately, it's not very long, so it's going to be only seven races as we get to Mizano 2. But then I guess that's also a good thing, because you guys get to see MotoGP 21 career mode number two in MotoGP with the Aprilia once again. Now, I did love using the Aprilia, and I still love it. And I probably need to get back into it, because I've picked up a few bad habits in Moto E compared to MotoGP. The bikes are much heavier and they are much easier to brake with in the sense of you can really hold the brake. There's not really a chance of you dropping the front or at least I've not had much experience of dropping the front compared to what I did in MotoGP and some of the practice sessions. But honestly, I've really, really enjoyed the Moto E Championship so far. Still got two more rounds to go after this one, so don't be negative. Don't feel down that you think it's going to be over. We've still got plenty of time and lots of chances for uh, wonderful races in Moto E. Let me know what you feel about Moto E as well, guys, because I know it's not very popular compared to the main categories, but at the same time, it's still a lot of fun. It's the, It has a sense of urgency with it that you have to really feel like you need to be on your best performance every single session and Grand Prix, because, of course, seven rounds doesn't mean there's much chance of anything going by the wayside. You have to make sure you're performing at the top level every single time, otherwise you're going to fall too far behind. But every single Grand Prix so far, I am going to spoil, we've taken the victory in every single one of them. We have been dominant in some of the races and even had some wonderful, fantastic battles like the one in Assen just a couple of days ago. Of course, that was very, very entertaining. Now, I'm hoping the Red Bull Ring is going to be something very similar. I do feel very confident here and I think I'm going to go pretty well but who knows what's going to happen there's a lot more to do of course we've got the e-poll session coming up straight after this practice session and that's where things are going to get very interesting so far we've had e-poll in every single grand prix and could we do it again here today in the fifth event of uh, moto e so far so unfortunately i did ditch the idea with the power setting two as you can see on screen right now i have changed the power setting three and we are having a quite a big difference, 8 tenths of a second up compared to how we were when we had power setting 2. Domi Egeter at the top of the timing sheet so far with 136.885. Eric Granado in second with Alessandro Zaccone in third place. Now Zaccone in real life I generally felt like he had the best chance of getting the Moto E Championship until towards the final Grand Prix in Mazzano. Mazzano won more or less because of course massive moment for Alessandro Zaccone was ruled out then for Mazzano 2. But at that point, he was leaving the championship. And after that, obviously, everything went heck to a handbasket. Eric Granado crashing on the Mazzano 1. Egeter and Jordi Torres coming to blows in the final Grand Prix as well. Major, major stuff in the real-life Moto E part. But until now, in the sense of our career mode and our championship, Grant has come in and absolutely dominated. It's been brilliant to watch, and I have had a ton of fun here in Moto E. It's, I, I implore you guys to try out Moto E. And of course, if you're still not great at the game in the sense of you feel like you've got a little bit of learning to do, don't hesitate to check out my video from yesterday, which was the MotoGP21 hand cam guide on teaching you how to improve the bike control and help you get a little bit better within the motorbike video game. Of course, if you have any more questions about learning and getting better at the game, you can always contact me directly in Discord or even comment in the comment section down below. Whatever you fancy, I'm going to be here, but I'll tell you what, the second split has come to an end and we are up by a massive amount. Into the third split in a moment's time, we could be well over 1.2 seconds if we can continue this pace. 
I'm pretty confident what I'm about to say next, but I definitely believe we're going to take the top position at the end of this practice session. Grant is riding the wheels of that Energica Ego machine right now, and we're up by five tenths per second by the end of the third split. This is a wonderful opportunity as we go into the right-hand side for turn nine. Turn ten coming up now as well, breaking nice and tight to the apex. Lovely done. No, run it a little bit too wide. A little bit of a uh, snack on the rear there, but we're pretty good across the line, and we're going to go top. Position by eight tenths of a second. So at the end of this session, you can see that Grant is at the top of the timing screen with eight tenths of a second clear from Domi Egeta and nine tenths of a second clear from Eric Granado. So now it's time for the e-poll session. If you're not aware of what happens in e-poll, I'm going to explain it to you once more. Basically, practice meant nothing compared to this session. This is all about our one stop, our one go, our one little bit of attempt to try and get the e-poll here in Moto E. So basically, the track is completely to ourselves and we have one chance of getting the job done. A brand new soft front, a brand new soft rear, and let's go for it with power setting three enables. Nice and tight to the apex there for turn one. That's probably one of the best corners I've ever done here in Moto E. And that was really tight to the apex. Sometimes I do tend to run it a little bit wide or break a little bit too late. But onto the left-hand side for turn two. We're going to go hard on the brakes here. Up by two and a half tenths of a second. Rear brake enabled, front brake enabled, and nice and tight to the apex once again. A little bit too tight as we went practically over the rumble strip there. Not ideal, but we're quite good. We're still going on board the motorcycle, and we'll get a better indication of where we are going to be in a moment's time when we get into the second split. So firm on the brakes will go once again. The rear brake getting slammed on. The front brake getting really applied there. Ride away into the back of the seat there. Boom, well and truly planted as we now enter the right-hand side for turn five. Th oh, four and a half tenths of a second is the second split. The third split is the most crucial one because I think everything can be made or broken right in that sector so be very careful as we go into the left hand side now nice and tight to turn seven not quite we ran it a little bit too deep for my liking but we'll flick it to the right hand side now pushing as much as we possibly can we're going to go really close to the rumble strip here almost on it underneath the michelin sign we're going to get an indication up by six and a half tenths of a second this could be one heck of a qualifying lap e-pole is bound to go to grant right now with this performance on the right hand side will go nice and tight to the apex of turn 10 bring on the acceleration Bring on the power across the line. We will go any moment now, and this should be curtains. And it is another e-pole position for Matt Grant. Brilliant performance for Mikel Pons, getting himself in second. But look at Alessandro Sacconi and the rest from further down. 1.6 seconds separates him from third place to first. Great stuff here today, guys, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for tonight's Grand Prix at 8pm, and I will see you then. So like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload. And upon that note, guys, I will see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.